I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enlarge this. So this, the, all the tutorials that we're presenting, they are, they are checked in on our GitHub. So you can always go to the GitHub of TF TensorFlow GNN, and then you can look at the same thing that we're presenting today right here. So now we're going to present how, like the code that you need to do for training node classification. The next tutorials will be on graph classification, and will be that's the second one. And the third one will be how you train on super large graphs. OK, so the, the first step is to install TFGenner on your machine. Of course, I do have it installed, so I don't, know, I don't need to run this myself. I'm going to go ahead and run all the cells right now as we go through them. We're going to explain most cells, but not every one of them. OK, so the first thing you need to do is, of course, the standard imports, TensorFlow, TFGNN, and some other standard Python packages. I'm not going to go through them line by line. And then the next things you need to import for this tutorial is to import ways of getting academic data sets over here. We have a number of models that are implemented. You can implement them with this line. And there are other utilities that are used over here for, for, for this tutorial. For example, we have some layer to read out the nodes that, that are being labeled. And we have some way of doing on-the-fly sampling through this uh, TFGNN sampler. Now we're going to look at like what you could do training-wise using some user interface options. So you can you could choose to train with no sampling, and you could do this over graphs that are maybe up to 100 million edges. It depends on the size of your CPU RAM or GPU RAM. Or you can say, no, I would like to sample on the fly. We're going to show both, but we're going to start with no sampling for now. You could choose one of the data sets. This is what we listed so far in the tutorial. Let's keep this, this default one, OGBN archive. And um, if you're sampling, you can, you can choose your batch size at each epoch, how many nodes you want to be, how, how many nodes you want to sample subgraphs around. Brandon is going to talk more about sampling. So we're going to just say you can, this is your mini batch size. If you're doing no sampling, then you're doing entire graph, all full batch gradient descent. There is this flag says validation as train. If you're doing some academic competitions like OGBN archive, you're allowed to use the validation as part of the training set, but only after you determine the hyperparameters. You could choose your model. We've implemented a few models here. There are many more, but this is what this tutorial has. GCN, some simple convolutional, jumping knowledge networks, GAT, and some GCN with residual connections. Let's just leave GCN for now. All these models are implemented in a file that we've imported above. It's called models.py. And each of those models have some kind of uh, hyperparameters that you can, you can look at the file, you can see its hyperparameters, and you can configure them here. And you have the option to convert the graph to undirected. So let's keep that true, because GCN likes undirected graphs. And uh, we, by default, most nodes have features. For example, in OGBN Archive, every node has features. But there are some data sets like OGBN Mag where nodes don't have features. If the nodes have features, then it, the features will be used as is. If the node does not have features, then you could choose an embedding vector to embed each node that doesn't have features. And finally, there are some training loop options. So how many epochs do you want to train over? How, how frequently do you want to run your evaluation loop? And what's the learning rate? So this is the high level variables that we're getting, that all the cells below use. So we just set them here. And below, th they're getting used. So we're not going to go through this data set block. But the, this data set block basically loads your data set. So at the end of the of this data set block, you have a training data set, validation data set, test data set. And all of them are TensorFlow data set objects. And uh, of course, there was an option above. If you remember, it's, it's about sampling. So whether you want to train on the entire graph, this is the no sampling option, or you would like to take samples at every epoch. If you keep the no sampling option over here, then the data set, trained data set, will contain the entire graph, but only the labels for the training nodes. 
and validation data set will contain the entire graph, but only the labels for the validation nodes, and respectively similar to the test data set. So as I said, we're not going to go through this code. Maybe I'll just show it's, it's boilerplate code. It's nothing too complicated. If we have time, we'll go back to it. The only thing I will show that there is an if statement in this code that checks if you're doing no sampling versus n memory sampling. And both of the if, if branches will initialize a train data set, valid data set, test data set, same as the else clause. Yes, sir. Uh, the, label, the label, sorry, I couldn't hear it. The labels are. The label for this, uh, oh, for this data set? Yeah. So OGBN archive, it's basically, it's, a, it's an article network or citation network. Each node is a paper. The edge means paper cites a paper. The label for the node is the type of the paper. So the paper types, there's 40 types. I think one of them says medical paper, one of them says physics paper, one of them says computer science paper, et cetera. And the data is, is retrieved from archive archive.org oh yes okay so where to get links to the code okay maybe i should show that so if you google for github tensorflow gnn if you go here there will be the github.com tensorflow gnn and over here there is an example subdirectory and in the example subdirectory we have a few binaries that you can run like all the code that I'm showing actually is in some directory called in memory. There's a binary version of it, and there's a tutorial version of it. So all the tutorials that we present today are in this directory that's called tutorials NeurIPS 2022. So again, TFGNN, examples, tutorials, NeurIPS 2022. And here there are some, some collab tutorials. Thank you, Brandon. Awesome. OK, I'm going to go back to the code. So this has already ran. Maybe like let's just for test, let's just add a cell on the fly and write train underscore ds. We can evaluate the cell. Oops, I meant to add a code cell. Maybe I delete this one. So if you evaluate train ds, it will tell you it's some kind of map data set object from TensorFlow. This is like a, some kind of TensorFlow description, like the size of the tensor that you get from it. Maybe let's just do this for graph, comma label in train BS. We're going to just grab a single example. We're going to break here. So just one a single example. Anyway, it's the entire graph. So if you get more examples, it's going to be the same. And let's print the graph and let's print the label. So this is just to brief people what's happening. Here we've gotten a single example, which happens to be the entire graph in this case, because we said don't sample. This graph has some nodes, it has some edges, and has some labels on the entire graph, some context. So these things will be explained in detail by Nestlehan. And there is also the labels tensor. It happens to be a one-hot tensor. OK, so this looks like, I guess it's, it's all zeros, but it's not. There are some ones set in the middle. You can always do tf.argmax on the labels. the labels and then you can do axis minus one so this tells you this label the first paper has label four and then five and 28 etc okay cool so we're going to actually go into more depth at the constructing the model part so the first portion just to just summarize the first code block is just to initialize the data set we're going to initialize the data set which which we did we're going to initialize the model then we're going to train so now we're trying to initialize the model. We have this helper function called make model by name. You can always make, look at this models.py, and you can make your own model, or you can use one of the existing models. So here, this make model by name will, will give us, you give it the model name, the number of classes, and some other arguments that this model wants, and then it returns you a model object. And it tells you if this model specifically likes undirected or directed graphs, like GCN likes undirected graphs. So let's run the cell. We actually we already ran the cell before, but let's let's walk through it. So the here we created the model at this line. This line, we're asking the graph data to tell us how many nodes are in the graph data. 
this this function right here it initializes the node features let's show where we call this function and then walk through the code of this function the way we usually build models in tensorflow or kiras is we start with some kind of input layer so if you haven't seen kiras before it's you build it on symbolic symbolic input so this is a placeholder it doesn't have the actual data so this is just a placeholder. Then we are memorizing this. This uh, We're setting a reference to this placeholder. It's called input graph. Then we're going to see a few lines where graph equals a function of graph. And now we're going to walk through these couple of functions. So the first thing we do is we pass the graph through this initialization layer. So here, this is a TFGNN Kiras layers map features. This map features takes a function, as you can tell, and returns you a layer that you can invoke on the graph. So the function that it takes in, in its argument will be able to initialize the node features. And this is important because your nodes could be images, could be videos, could be textual. So this function set node features, if you look at it over here, it basically will must retain some kind of feature matrix for the nodes. So here, it's I've implemented it in a simple way right now. If the node set already comes with features and the features are called feet, then return those node features. Otherwise, embed it. Like make an, make an embedding layer. Yeah, make, make an embedding layer for, 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 this, uh, for the nodes that, are, that don't have features. Of course, here, if you, if you have some kind of image, maybe you want to process it through a CNN the whatever you invoke over here is trainable or could be trainable so you could have maybe some variables maybe cnn and it will back propagate through the variables here so the after initializing the features we also get a graph now each node's features will come from this function that we saw above and the final step is to run the graph neural network model and in our example right now we chose gcn as the model Finally, you want to read out the the nodes that are you want to read out the features for the nodes that are labeled. So we have this readout function read seed node seed, seed node features. You give it the graph and you tell it what are the nodes that you want to read that you want to read from. It gets read over here, and finally your model is just a computational graph that starts from the input and ends with this with the with the features for the labeled nodes you basically say i want i want a kiros model from this input to this output and this becomes your model afterwards it's just standard kiros code is you make an maybe some optimizer function so here we're saying we want the adam optimizer you could have done this maybe by just invoking adam directly instead of giving a learning rate as, as a flag like this you 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 construct the optimizer OPT equals the actual optimizer. Actually, I'm not even using this one. So this one could be commented out. And the last function here, we're using cross entropy and we're compiling the model. When you compile the model, it will make the graph more optimal, the TensorFlow computation graph. And training is just like this, Kiras model dot fit. So you give it the training data set and uh, you tell it to train for how many epochs, how often to evaluate, and you give it the validation data, et cetera. So here, uh, I did run the cells just before, but we're going to do yet another run. And you can see here, like the, the, training, uh, the training iterations, like the validation accuracy, et cetera. So we only traded for 50 epochs. Let's just do one more time training using on-the-fly sampling. This is, in this tutorial, you would only have to switch this to in memory. And let's run the cells maybe runtime, run run after, and then if I scroll all the way here, all the cells were run quickly, and uh, it's right now waiting for those to happen. Now it just started training over here. So you will, oh, I guess it only, it, yeah. It's, did it run? Yeah, I guess it, it did run in two, let's run it again. Yep. Okay, now it's actually running. Cool. 
So this was this portion of the talk. It's just to give you a high-level overview of the of TFGNN and graph neural networks. And now we have a 10-minute break, and we should be back at 10:20. Thank you. <laughs>